So, you want to build the data rich? Client side web application. You most probably are going to be using a lot of JavaScript to do this. And there is some problems that can pile up. It's very easy to create JavaScript web applications that end up in a messy, tangled pile of selectors and callbacks, all in the name of trying to keep things in sync between your UI, your JavaScript project, and your database that's right located on your server. This is where Backbone comes in. So what we'll, we will be covering in this presentation is a brief history of Backbone. What is Backbone? Why should you use Backbone over other frameworks or libraries? Some of the web applications that use Backbone and the licensing. So a very brief history of Backbone is that it was created by Jeremy Ashkenz. He's also known for creating CoffeeScript. Uh, it originated from an open source project called Document Cloud, which was created in 2009. It was an open source project, kind of based on, it's a document storage and organization thing um, aimed at journalists. And it actually created a lot of um, other open source projects. Backbone is one of them. Another one is underscore JS, which is a, the one single dependency that Backbone has. The initial release for Backbone was on the 13th of October, 2010. So the next part of the presentation is where we'll be spending most of our time, and that is what is Backbone? Well, coming back to the initial problem I presented to you in the beginning of the presentation, in a data-rich client-side web application, it can be very difficult for your JavaScript to keep, to keep your job, it's difficult to keep your JavaScript from becoming a tangled mess, all in the name of keeping everything in sync. So one of the first steps to fix this issue is to stop tying the data to the DOM. And this is where Backbone steps in. Backbone helps you bring a more structured approach to your web application. Backbone is a JavaScript library with a JSON interface in the REST philosophy. It is based on the MVP or Model View Presenter um, and Actor Design Paradigms. The model view presenter paradigm is very similar to the model view controller, um, but it is slightly different. Now onto the more practical parts of what Backbone is. So with Backbone, you represent your data as mod mod models, and you can display the models states with your views. The models that you use to represent your data can be created, validated, destroyed, and saved to the server. Views are used to display and render a model state on your HTML page. And this is where Backbone's main strength lies. Should a user make an action that causes a model's attribute to change, the model will trigger a change event that notifies all the views displaying that model state, and the views will then respond accordingly by re-rendering themselves to display the new state. This means that you no longer have to comb through the DOM looking to find the specific elements that are displaying that specific data and having to update that HTML menu. Put simply, when a model changes, the views will automatically change themselves. But on a higher, more philosophical kind of level, Backbone is an attempt to discover the smallest set of user interface which are used and data structuring models primitives that are useful when building web applications in Java. So Backbone does not want to limit a developer, unlike other frameworks and libraries that do everything for you, or require you to reorganize your websites um, with the behavior. Backbone wants to be a tool that allows you, the developer, the freedom to design the full experience of your web application. So why do you want to use, so now that we have you know, what Backbone is, we can move on to answering the question why should you use Backbone over other frameworks or libraries? From what we've seen so far Backbone, the most obvious advantages are that the Backbone is that Backbone is very adaptable and that Backbone provides a very, the common foundation for a data-rich web application and what it requires. But here's some more reason why you should be using Backbone. With Backbone, the focus is not on widgets or reinventing JavaScript, but on developing um, giving developers helpful methods to query and manipulate your data. The developer is not forced to use a single template engine. Views are bound to be HTML constructed the way you like one, wanted it to be constructed. 
Uh, Backbone is a very small library. It's only a few kilobytes. Your production file is about 6.3 kilobytes. The development is 56 kilobytes. And the source for it is uh, can be read very quickly and understood um, in a short amount of time. You can do it in probably about an afternoon or so. Backbone does not depend on stuffing your application logic into your HTML. Um, there's no need to create your own HTML tags or anything like that. Uh, Backbone uses synchronous events as the fundamental building block. So there's no need to continuously search your data structures for any changes. But if you want to have a specific event be asynchronous, it can be very easily done. Backbone scales very well, whether on mobile or to other bigger applications. Backbone is a library, not a framework. So you just need to include it, just like jQuery. And it works very well with other libraries and frameworks. With Backbone, two-way data binding is avoided. This gives the developer more freedom to specify update events, such as if you want just a the change event to be a key to press or the save button being pressed. Simply serializing the form to JSON and that is faster and much easier. But again, if you don't, if you do want to implement two-way data binding, you can do it. The last advantage um, with Backbone is that it's there's no inherent performance penalty with structuring your data with Backbone. So, we now know what Backbone is, and we also know why you should choose to use it. But to give even further reason and proof as to its advantages and disadvantages and helpfulness, here are some websites and web applications that use Backbone. Airbnb makes use of it. BitTorrent, the website, uses Backbone. Dig, which is what Reddit, or what you uh, came before Reddit, uses Backbone. Foursquare uses Backbone. Roofshark is another user of Backbone. Hulu, uh, the website also uses Backbone. Pandora Radio, a uh, music streaming site. The, so the kind of social media site Pinterest makes use of Backbone. Soundcloud also. And there's a few others. You have Diaspora, Document Cloud, the original, the originator of it. Flickster, Groupon Now, uh, LinkedIn Mobile makes use of it. Use below Open Bravo, the Sony Entertainment Network uses it, Stride App, Final Corporation, Trello, uh, the news site USA Today uses it, WordPress.com, not to be confused with WordPress.org, WordPress.com, the site uses it, and Xtuple also uses it. So, on to the uh, more boring part of it, which is the licensing, and for the millionth time, I'll be telling you that it uses an MIT license. And I'll be telling you again what the MIT license is, which is that it's a permissive free software license, which means that the license permits reuse of this, uh, the proprietary software as long as all copies of the software include a copy of the MIT license terms and the copyright notice. So we have now come to an end. This is what we covered in the section. We did a brief history of Backbone that was created by Jeremy Ashton's and a rep and originated from the Document Cloud project. What Backbone is, is that, which is that it is a JavaScript library that helps the developer better structure their data-rich client-side web application. We know why to use Backbone in that it's a small, quick to learn and powerful JavaScript library. We know what existing web applications make use of Backbone, and we know that Backbone uses the MIT license. Thank you very much for listening. Um, if you would like to ask any questions, please do.